for part C of this problem, we're going to do something that's pretty similar to what we did for part B. So we're going to take the results we derived in part A, and we're going to see that they're all consistent with our understanding of the harmonic oscillator. So we're going to find the expected value of kinetic energy and potential energy. So for the zero state and restate, let's find the expected value of kinetic energy. And the formula of this is given by the expected value of p squared divided by 2m. That's pretty much the definition of kinetic energy. So all we have to do is just to substitute this result in, which we derived earlier in part a. And you see that this is equal to 1 for h bar omega. So this is the expected value of kinetic energy. Now we do the same thing for potential energy. And the potential for the harmonic oscillator is given by this expression. And since these terms over here are constants, we can pull them out. So in the end, you have these constants multiplied by the expected value of x squared. And then using the result we derived earlier, we can just substitute this right in. And then canceling these out, you see that this is equal to 1 for h bar omega. So this is the expected potential energy. So if we add these two terms up, you would expect this to be the total amount of energy. And that is indeed the case, because if you add these up, you get 1 half h bar omega. And then if you check with our understanding of the total amount of energy of the zero stationary state, so we call the formula that the amount of energy in the end stationary state is given by this formula over here. So you see that our results over here correspond exactly to this result over here. So for n equal to zero, you see that our total amount of energy matches perfectly with what we expect. So now we're going to do the same thing for n equal to one. So once again, we just repeat the same process. We find the expected value of kinetic energy. Once again, we apply the definition. And we basically just substitute everything. in. So you see that there is pretty much no fancy mathematics in this problem. All we have to do is just to substitute the stuff inside this, inside these expressions over here. So we have the same expression as before for, kinet for potential energy. So we substitute in the expected value of x squared. So these cancel out. So you get 3 over 4 h bar omega. So this is the kinetic energy. This is the expected potential energy. And then once we add these up, you see that we have 3 over 2 h bar over omega. And once again, this, is, this corresponds exactly to what we expect from this, from this formula over here. So in this case, we have n equal to 1. And then if you substitute that inside this formula over here, you get exactly this expression. So you see that all the results we derived earlier, they're all consistent with what we would expect to come out of from the harmonic oscillator uh, model. And one extra thing to notice is that you can see that the expected value of kinetic energy and potential energy, they're evenly distributed. So half of the, amount, half of the energy goes to kinetic energy and half of it goes to potential energy. You see that both of these terms are equal. And the same goes for n equal to 1. So both of these terms are equal. And this actually applies for all the other stationary states. So actually, in an early example, David Griffiths actually proved that this has to be the case. The distribution of energy has to be equal between kinetic and potential.